I promise you, we, we have to continue for Mr. Jerry to show us what our ancestors does for us. That's the reason why he put them on the wall for you to come and see and come and learn more. So if anything, I will put Mr. Jerry number there. Call Mr. Jerry and come here. Or you call me, I will brought you here. New Nigo from Trump for you to come and see your ancestors, know their name, know what they, for example, the one who is coming from my own region, my own language write a song i don't know how to sing it so you have to come and learn it so that <laughs> you know your own yeah so and it's free of charge yes okay it's a free of charge but bring the students but if you are coming yeah don't you, come you, alone you, bring you, your you students. understand if you are coming <laughs> you understand yeah, you have to drink because he's talking showing this thing it's not small thing yeah so if you are coming prepare something small come in. it's a free of charge but <laughs> let's go so it really is no bet. I mean, it's for yourself. Because the children, you know, when children yes. come through here, we, we're not... We're, yeah. Yeah. You have to learn. You can't charge your children to learn what you should have already taught them. Thank you very much okay, for so, doing that. So, so let's, let's continue, yeah. All right, so now uh, mm. this is Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. Yeah. Of course, Ethiopia was one of the few nations never to be colonized. Yes. Uh, but even after they had won the colonial wars in the late 1800s, yeah. uh, the Italians who they had beaten yeah. still came back because they upset Mussolini and these people in Italy and they had gained power. So they came back to uh, subdue mm -hmm. the uh, Ethiopians again. Mm -hmm. This time, of course, uh, uh, the Ethiopians weren't as strong or weren't as ready. But one interesting thing happened during the time of Haile Selassie struggling against the Italians. Okay. A lot of Africans from around the world yeah. rallied to say this is Ethiopia, yeah. this is a place we could go join okay. and try to help. Uh, he's great. also known as uh, Rastafari, yeah. uh, to your Rasta friends. Uh, Ras basically means it's kind of like prince. Okay. So he was born Liege Tafari mm -hmm. Makonnen, okay. Liege being like a child yeah. in royalty. Mm -hmm. And he came to Ras, which mm -hmm. is when you get older, prince-like. So that's Rastafari Makonnen, okay. which became, of course, Rastafari and Rasta. So. That's where that comes from. All right. Uh, that, that's, he was, that's very great. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, Pianki, uh, PA in the uh, 25th dynasty, ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. This was the last of the really, really uh, pure black uh, dynasties, and we began to degrade, and other people started to come in okay. after the 25th dynasty. Although we we're still African dynasties yeah. after, but this is in terms of like really pure African dynasties. Okay. Uh, 1714 BCE, so you can see we were a long, long way not, not, not into, into the, uh, the um, pharaonic Egypt okay. and, and the uh, di dynasties of Egypt. Yeah. So that was out of, like some people call this the Sudanese dynasty. Very so good. when you see him, Pianke, Shabaka, Taharka, all of those, okay. those are in the 25th dynasty. Okay. The Shaka, the great Zulu king, was able to consolidate a lot of uh, territory. Uh, at the expense of a lot of other Africans, but it did build a state that was powerful enough to resist at some level mm -hmm. uh, against uh, European incursions during the uh, colonial oh. uh, wars. Fannie Lou Hamer, when I was a young boy in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, black Americans basically couldn't vote. On paper they could vote, mm -hmm. but in reality it was very difficult. Okay. So she was fighting for the right to vote for black people. She was jailed, she was beaten, she was tortured. All of this because she was just trying to uh, struggle for the right for black people to vote. Mm -hmm. So she's one of our great, great, courageous heroes wow. in history in America. This is <clears throat> uh, you all should be able to tell me something about this man, Togwe <laughs> Sri, the first. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, coming out of Noche, yeah. the one who was able to bring to a lot of the Togo people. Too. Mm -hmm. Ghana. And Togo Ghana. and Ghana, yeah. Anglo, yeah. Togo and Ghana. So, you know, sometimes, uh, depending on who's here, sometimes they tell stories about Akole, the wicked king, and all of the things and mm -hmm. the strategies that they employed to yeah. escape yeah. uh, Noche to get down into this region. Mm -hmm. so that was Togbe Sri, Togbe for, the, for, the, for the, the yeah. first, for the Eves. Yeah. Uh, the gods, we have uh, Taki Tawia. Uh, he was also. <coughs> uh, Mm -hmm. right. He was struggling. In 1902, he died. But this is the time period that, that Ghana was being colonized. So yeah. you can imagine 
the struggle that he had to try to maintain his nation. For sure. But even in that struggle, he was able to organize well. He was able to modernize to the extent possible, being under the pressure of the new colonial order coming from Britain. Wow. Uh, what we do here is I usually take the students and I let them pick someone who looks like this man okay. and, they'll, and they'll stand there. So they pick the one, he'll mm -hmm. stand there mm -hmm. and then we'll all admire how much he looks like okay. uh, this man. Mm. This man is a uh, Narmer or Menis, uh, which after the child, after we establish that the child looks like this man, mm -hmm. this is when I explain to the students who the man is. Okay. This is the real head because it's still in the museum in Europe okay. of the very first Pharaoh Mm -hmm. of the very first dynasty yes. of ancient Egypt mm -hmm. or ancient Kemet. Yeah. So in all your school literature and all your Bible literature, all of this, they have yeah. these European looking people, mm -hmm. maybe even Arab looking yeah. as the pharaohs and the all kings and all of that. Mm -hmm. This is the actual face of the very first pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Wow. So you can see usually he looks just like the boy that they chose. Yes. I mean, it's clearly an African, mm -hmm. clearly an African yeah. face. And this is the real face. Mm -hmm because they've carved it in big stone head yeah. and they've stolen it and take it to the museum in For Europe. Sure. One of our greatest leaders that we ever had was Amakal Cabral. My guys have just finished painting. They left the L off the, off the end, but that's okay. Cabral okay. Uh, from Guinea-Bissau. He was probably one of our best all-around leaders coming out of the colonial period. Okay. Not only was he a leader of the military, he was the uh, <clears throat> the one who really collapsed the Portuguese okay. army. The Portuguese, of course, they had, they had colonized Guinea-Bissau, mm -hmm. which is where he is with Cape Verde. They had colonized Mozambique, colonized Angola. Okay. But when he was able to win enough battles, cost them enough in terms of lives and money, mm -hmm. to where the people, young people in Portugal rose up, they had a revolution and said, we got to get out of Africa mm -hmm. and losing lives and money and all the rest. Wow. He's also written a lot, several, a few books anyway, Return to the Source, Unity and Struggle, mm -hmm. these kind of things. I do the same thing here. I'll have a young child stand, one of the students, and they choose someone who looks most like this, Imhotep. Okay. Then I tell them, here we are in the 18th, I'm, I'm sorry, the third dynasty. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about 2600 BC mm -hmm. or BCE in ancient means, Kemet yeah. or ancient Egypt. This man was the first world's first multiple genius. He was mm -hmm. the world's first medical doctor. He was an astronomer. He was an architect. He was a scribe, poet, writer, all of the rest. Wow. The great, great Imhotep. Watch your, <laughs> watch your step. My wow. boy didn't clean well this morning. <clears throat> Toussaint Louverture. 1743 to 1803, Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, I just mentioned back there, Napoleon uh, was the general. Have you heard of Napoleon? Yeah. The great, so-called greatest uh, general yeah. in history. Well, he wasn't quite the greatest because he wasn't able to beat a Toussaint Louverture and his fighters and, and keep hold of Haiti. Mm -hmm. The Haitians fought. A lot of the Haitians were from places like Dahomey, yeah. and they were pulled together. So a lot of the Fon people, Ewe people, yeah. those groups were there. Okay. They made the mistake of not really separating them the way they should have, like they did a lot of the ethnic groups. So they were able to come together okay. using their languages, their customs, voodoo, voodoo, mm -hmm. and rise up and, and free themselves from the French and okay. the French plantations, being the very first or the second black independent nation in the Western Hemisphere. Sure. Nagbewa, if you come from the north, you've probably heard of Nagbewa. Yeah. Uh, he was the father of a lot of the northern groups, the Mamprusis, yeah. Tagombas, mm -hmm. uh, even the Moshi going up into Burkina Faso. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's buried there in Pusaga next to Baku. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come from the Khan side, of course, Osei Tutu the first was the very first of Santahini. Mm -hmm. You probably heard some of the stories of yeah. him and the Confanoche and the gold, golden stool. Yeah. We couldn't really put all of that in one picture here, yeah. but uh, a lot of times the children will have heard of that story. Okay. The great Thomas sure. Sankara from Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. coming from just uh, north here of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Of course, this man was uh, incorruptible. You know, not only did he uh, bring women in high into his um, administration, mm -hmm. he reduced corruption to almost nothing had to start driving small cars if he were ministers. Mm -hmm. But the main reason that he was killed, and he was killed with African hands, but with 
European and Euro-American backing was because he refused to pay all of these only odious debts mm -hmm. that the IMF, World Bank, and the rest said that he had to pay. They didn't pay it. He said he wouldn't pay it. The next thing you know, he was gone. But he had the courage to stand in principle for what he knew was right. Uh, Amenarenus. Amenarenus was a great Kandaki or queen of ancient Kush. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking 60 to 10 BCE. Now this time, by now, the Romans had finally taken over in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But we're talking, see, 3000 BC with, with Menes. Yeah. Now here we are, so, so we're talking 3000 years later. Yeah. Now the Romans, you know, so if you watch these movies, they'll have Roman pharaohs and all yeah, of this yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have the pyramids and they have people working yeah. all of this. When, but that was 3000, yeah. at least 2000 years yeah. after it actually happened. Mm -hmm. You understand. So by now the Romans had taken over in, in Egypt yeah. and they wanted to go south into what today we would call northern Sudan, mm -hmm. you know, to finally come back down into black Africa. Ran into this Kandake and Menorenus and her army. This is Caesar's army. She was able to beat Caesar's army, mm -hmm. push them back into Egypt and keep themselves free for another 300 or so years. Wow. So that's what these African queens were able to do at the time. Menelik the second, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned that uh, Ethiopia had never been um, colonized yeah. uh, by force mm -hmm. uh, to a large extent because Menelik had the vision and foresight to mm -hmm. say, no, 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 we're not going to let the Italians come in here and do what the French and the Portuguese and the mm -hmm. British and all the rest did in the rest of Africa. Yeah. They armed themselves, they ammunition, training, and when the Italians came and tried to play some tricks and take over their nation. Mm -hmm. he, they went to war with Menelik's army. Uh, the Ethiopian army won. 1896, Battle of Adua, were able to finally kick the Italians out of Ethiopia. Okay. So he could see what was coming and prepared himself. Yeah. Here we have Minister Malcolm X, when in America we call him our black shining prince. Mm -hmm. um, Malcolm X was a great speaker, a great activist. Uh, he woke up so many young men, encouraged and empowered and emboldened so many young men that the American government said we have to get rid of this guy. Mm -hmm. So they were able to organize to have him assassinated. Now a lot of the children want to know why the name X was here yeah. because he didn't know his African name so he said I'm not taking any name. Mm -hmm. So he just put an X for his surname. Okay. So the children ask me this all of the time and sometimes we even do a little skit okay. where we'll take the children and we'll and we'll pretend they're a family, and everywhere the slave ship drops them off. Or they drop them off in Brazil, yeah. which was a Portuguese colony, mm -hmm. I mean a Portuguese um, slave plantations there. Uh -huh. They would change the African surname to Portuguese, yes. the Santos. Yes. Then he moved to Trinidad, they would change it to a British surname, because yes. they, they were, had slaves in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So you might become Macmillan, okay. whereas before you were Amu, okay. <laughs> you yes. know, yes. you understand? Yes. And then the next place they stop, might be Cuba, which is a Spanish, uh, Spanish are, are in charge there. Mm -hmm. And you may end up with your name Gonzalez or Garcia, yeah. the same Amu. Yeah. So that same Amu family mm -hmm. within a space of two weeks yes. can have a Portuguese name. Mm -hmm. The father, the mother can have a Spanish name. Yes. The oldest son could have a mm -hmm. Dutch name. The next daughter could have a, a French, name, French name and the last one could have a British. Okay. <laughs> and they're the same people in just one week before they were together as a family. Yeah. And there's no Amu left. So how do we come back and find out who we yes, are? Yes, yes, that's true. That's the tragedy that we yes. feel when us in the diaspora who had to leave. Chetsuel, Chetsuel was another one of the great Zulu warriors down the, down the genetic line of Shaka the Zulu. Mm -hmm. Struggle mightily against the British, won some wars against the British. Of course, you see, this is really shows where the, the, the gunpowder and the and the automatic weapons and the machine guns and the cannon mm -hmm. in the hands of the European defeated our most well-disciplined mm -hmm. and courageous warriors. No. So we didn't lose these wars because we were disorganized or courageous or anything. We lost them because when they have the, 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 the rifles, when they have the machine guns and you don't have them, mm -hmm. you're going to lose, I don't care what. Yes. Akhenaten, many people call him the father of um, uh, monotheic religions, uh, mainly Hebrewism, which is uh, also um, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Mm -hmm. You can look in all those religions and find uh, inside of those religions their parent 
religion, yes. which came out of Nile Valley, yeah. Egypt. So yeah. we have all kinds of examples, like the Ten Commandments, which Moses was supposed to have brought down from Sinai. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Moses was an Egyptian? Yeah. And so in Egypt at the time, or in Kemet at the time, in yeah. the 18th dynasty, yeah. Akhenaten's dynasty, this is when Moses was alive. Okay. What was, the, what was the religion? What was the spiritual system? Yeah. You see all of these admonitions of Ma'at, thou shalt not kill, mm -hmm. commit adultery, all of these things that later show up in the Ten Commandments. Well, you know, someone just rewrote the story and took credit, mm -hmm. but this had been in our religious traditions forever. And when you hear it today, it's just some marginal small piece. Yeah. And it's like a child going to uh, listening to a PhD mm -hmm. and he takes a notes for two weeks and he comes back and now he thinks he's the PhD. Yes. And if he's got the weapons, he can kill up enough people and they begin to call him doctor. Yes. And that's where, <laughs> and that's where we are today. That's where we are today. Yes. With them in this religion. Mm -hmm. That's why it's yeah. senseless. The great Bob Marley, of course, uh, greatest, uh, not just reggae singer, but probably most popular entertainer in the world Very sure. over Very sure. the time. Because some of the missing... No place in the world people the don't know Martha. It's now before we, we, we know what he's talking what about. What he was talking about. Yes. He could see it. Uh, Wangari Matai, uh, I think I tell the story. This woman got the you know, Nobel Prize, which is not a big deal for us Africans. We don't care that much. But they got it for her planting millions of trees and doing all these kinds of things mm -hmm. her, you know, for the ecology, for the, for the land, for the, for the future. Mm -hmm. But when I gave my uh, artist this picture, it wasn't green. It was just a black and white picture. So he sketched the face in black and white. I saw it. I said, it's the right size. It looks nice. I left. I came back. The whole thing was green. Whoa. Now, he didn't know anything about who this woman was. <laughs> so I said, why did you paint this green? He says, I don't know. I just, the spirit, I felt it. So I just, I was looking down and my hand just went to the green. So. Wow. And he even put the tree. Uh, yes. Can you imagine? So he doesn't know anything about who the woman is great ecological um, advocate planting millions of trees. So that's how the ancestors spirit works. That's, that's how it works, yeah. you know. Sometimes they will help you to do something to, before you... Uh, you don't even know why you did it. Yes. Uh, Sengbe Pierre Senke from Sierra Leone. Um, he was among the Timne people of Sierra Leone. Uh, he, when it, one of the slave ships that he was on had gotten all the way to the... To, part of the U.S. and it was coming back to Cuba. The mm -hmm. ship was called the Amistad, the one coming to Cuba. Mm -hmm. well, him and the other Africans raised up and mutinied yeah. the ship. And they took the ship over from the Spanish crew, mm -hmm. killed the captain and did all that. Of course, they tried to sail the ship back to Africa because mm -hmm. they wanted to come back home. Wow. Unfortunately, none of them were sailors, yeah. at least not on these ships. And the ship ended up uh, landing in the U.S. somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And so they were taken to trial and all that. But they're Main reason here is one, they were strong enough and, and, and brave enough mm -hmm. to commandeer and take over that slave ship. And number two, when they commandeered and took it over, what did they do? They tried to bring it back to Africa. You see, a lot of our students today look and say, why did they do that? Mm -hmm. You know, they're already that close to America. And yeah. I tried to explain they're going to be slaves there. Yeah. They were like, well, you know, whatever you have to do to get to America. So this is how far we have to come. Yeah. Our children would even say, if we, <laughs> if we took over a slave ship, mm -hmm. we would dock it in America and just go, I said, no, not if you're going to be slaves for the next three centuries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the education system yeah. doesn't make that clear. Yes. This is uh, Fred Hampton. We call him the chairman, chairman of the Black Panther Party in Chicago. The Black Panthers were a group to uplift African people in mm -hmm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. But they killed him because his voice was so influential, not only with... Uh, Africans, but with uh, and the white the whites, Latinos, everyone, wow. he was getting them to move, and the U.S. government got rid of him. Wow. Samuel Maharero, um, do you, have you, ever, you all ever heard of this uh, Holocaust in World War II where they killed all of the, Hitler killed all yeah. of the Jews? Mm -hmm. Well, those Germans who did that, they did that first in, in Namibia, Southwest Africa. Okay. <clears throat> and, and what they did is they started these work camps, rounding the Africans up, killing them in huge, huge numbers. Uh, and Maharero was the leader of that, of that uh, resistance okay. to it. And so we've even in, been able to see that some of those German generals, colonels, sergeants who were involved with the massacres mm -hmm. in Namibia, 
their sons and their offspring, mm -hmm. when they joined the military in Germany, they became the ones who were doing the Holocaust against the, the Jewish people there in Germany. So it's like they practiced the Holocaust on us mm -hmm. and then they did a larger scale on themselves there in Europe. Wow. Oliver Tambo, another one who was kicked out of South Africa, struggled against the apartheid system for his whole life, three, well not his whole life, but three decades outside of South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, organizing uh, money, organizing weaponry to support the wars going on, anti-apartheid struggles, all of that gone for three decades. Mm -hmm. One of our great South African leaders. Wow. Augustino Neto, Neto, uh, we call him the Imhotep man instead of Renaissance man, which means he could do so many different things. Mm -hmm. He was a leader, of course, of the army and the, and the struggle against the Portuguese when they were trying to get their uh, freedom from the, yeah. from the, I mean, the, when they were trying to get their freedom from the Portuguese, okay. just like uh, I showed you. Um, Amakar Cabral, okay. also struggling against the Portuguese. So he was their leader. He's a poet, okay. established poet. He's a medical doctor. Wow. He's their first president wow. and just an all around dynamic in leader in Angola. Okay. Zabeth of Haiti, this young girl at nine years old from the, the French slave plantations in Haiti, she started trying to run away. Wow. So she ran away at nine, they caught her, they beat her. She turned around saw daylight, ran away again. They caught her the next time, they beat her, they branded her, they shackled her, they did everything. As Soon as she got another chance, she's gone again. So over and over again, they would catch this girl, nine years old, 10, 11, 12, you know, and no matter how they tortured her or punished her, as soon as she got another chance, she's gone again, until finally she died, you know, during one of the escapes. So this kind of uh, determination not to let other people rule you, we, we, we need to resuscitate that, get that back, and uh, not allow other people to come to Ghana yes. and rule us now and destroy what we have. Baby Ray of the Sierra Leone, of the Temne group, what happened here is the British would come into a, a country like uh, Sierra Leone, of course mm -hmm. it wasn't called Sierra Leone by that time. <clears throat> and just like they would do it in Kenya, everywhere else, mm -hmm. they want the Africans there in that African land to work for them. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is you, you look at their hut that they're living in and you impose a tax on the hut. Yeah. They call it the hut tax. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, okay, now the hut you've been living in for five generations has a tax on it. The only way you can pay us the tax is pay us pounds and sterling and all of that. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can earn it is to work for us over here. Okay. So come do this slave labor on your own land. We'll pay you. Then you'll have the money to pay the tax on the hut that you were already living in. My man said, no, we're not doing we're that. Not do that. So we go, they went to war with the British and they call it the hut tax war. So that's the great baby Ray with some success. But once again, in most cases, they were overcome by the weaponry mm -hmm. of, the, of the whites. Felix Mumi of Cameroon, this is one of our great young revolutionary leaders. He's coming up in the ranks in Cameroon. Oh. Of course, they were in, uh, um, well, the British and the French had colonized Cameroon, but he, he went to Geneva to do some negotiations having to do with their freedom in their post-colonial era. Okay. While he was at dinner, they poisoned him with thallium. Wow. He died there in Geneva. Um, and the reason I have this here is because Geneva is in Switzerland, and a lot of young Africans, as they hear the word Switzerland, yeah. Geneva, they think, oh, these are these very liberal places that love blacks mm -hmm. and blah, blah. And I'm just letting them know there's nowhere in the, Af nowhere in the world no, that you are Africa. safe. Yeah. That's why Garvey said you have to have a nation. Yeah. So if your nation is strong enough, then they can't just kill you when you travel. Yes. Because if they kill you when you travel, then you'll kill them when they travel. Yes. Right. Yes. So right now, the Chinese travel around the world. They don't worry about people because killing their them. Is strong. They're not worried about people killing them. If yeah. you start killing Chinese around the world, they'll start dying. Whites will start dying in Hong Kong. Yes. <laughs> you know, in all of these other places. <laughs> yes. So you have to be careful. Wow. You can abuse Africans anywhere in the world. Nobody and, you know, will say anything. Who's got the power? To, have a, a who's got the power to, to punish? Say. Who's got the power to punish someone who is mistreating wow. Africans in the world? 
That's why you have to build your own power. Yes. So the young people all trying to run out to these other countries, you're just running to be second class citizens sure. and you're not building the power that you need in your own country to guarantee your safety when you leave. Wow. Felix Mumi. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I get it. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Sekohune, Sekohune out of uh, Limpopo area of South Africa. Of course, he had to struggle against the Boers. The Boers are the, the, the Dutch uh, Afrikaners who went and took all the land away from the natives in South Africa mm -hmm. and forced them to speak this Afrikaans, the Dutch language. And of course, the British came too. So he had to fight the Dutch and then he had to follow up fighting the British. Uh, he had some success, but at the end he he lost and had a half brother kind of uh, work with the other side. And of mm -hmm. course, after that happened, they got rid of the half brother. See. This is Nahanda from Zimbabwe. Okay. She was a spirit woman leader behind the Shemaranga War resistance okay. against the British. Uh, when they finally caught her, they also hung her and then cut her head off, oh. uh, just to you know discourage the next ones. But there are women now coming up uh, who are naming their daughters Nahanda, mm -hmm. uh, even in America. Mm -hmm. That was the first Shemaranga war resistance, and we'll see uh, the second Shemaranga came later. Okay. Martin Luther King Jr., you probably heard of him. Yes. Everybody's heard of him in the U.S., one of our great human rights leader. Uh, he was a man of peace, but he was also a man of truth, mm -hmm. and he tried to encourage people to not go join these wars young people not to join wars okay. just because they were sent by the Americans or the British okay. or anyone else. Uh, the Great Hat Shepsut, because many people don't know, not only were they uh, pharaohs in ancient Egypt, black pharaohs, but yeah. some of them were even females. Yeah. So she was one of the great female pharaohs of ancient okay. Egypt whose, um, whose, whose reign or whose uh, um, power was really far and wide. She traveled to Somalia, she was all through the Middle East, and she has great, great monuments that are almost uh, mir miraculous monuments built in Egypt in her honor. Now we're in Nubia. Nubia is kind of near Kush, which is in the, either what you call south of Egypt or the north of Sudan today. Yeah, Nubia. Now we go and we, it's 641, all right, AD. Mm -hmm. Now you know who's in charge finally in Egypt. Yes. Who do you think is in charge yes. now? No, no, 641 A.D. The Arabs have finally uh, uh, come. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the Arabs are finally coming. So that means 3000 B.C., 2000 B.C., 1000 B.C., uh, 500 B.C., all the way through. Now we're 640 600. A.D. Yeah. The Arabs finally come. So thousands of years have gone by in black Egypt, even the, the Romans and the mm -hmm. Greeks had already been in Egypt. Yeah. Finally, the Arabs come. Okay. But the point now is even the Arabs are running around calling themselves the pharaohs and the mm -hmm. and all of these movies are made with these either European or Arab looking people mm -hmm. as the pharaohs, as the people. Yeah. Well, they had nothing to do with it. They're 3,000 years late, <laughs> almost 4,000. Yes. Now, what happened? These Arabs decided they were going to do what the, the Romans mm -hmm. tried to do with mm -hmm. Caesar, which yeah. is go south where Menorahinus kicked them out of Kush. Mm -hmm. They went south to fight again, to expand into black Africa. They got trapped in Nubia, fighting Khalidarat, his people. They were able to beat these uh, Arabs, okay. kick them back up into Egypt, okay. and force them into a treaty not to come back that lasted 700 years. Okay. 700 years, so the treaty was called the Bakht. So when you think about that, that's the kind of power that the Africans oh, had that when they go and went to war with someone, they could win those wars and force you to stay. Don't come here again. Don't you dare. And so this is the power we had. And that was, can you imagine, 700 years. Uh, they didn't get through there again. Wow. Muhammad Ali, uh, the greatest boxer of all time, at least in a lot of our opinions. But that's not exactly what he's here for. What he's really here for is the fact that he refused uh, to be used by the American government as a soldier or he's a spokesman for the army and all of that kind of thing. He said, I'm not fighting people in Vietnam okay. or anywhere else because the racism against black people here in America, I can't, I can't get control of that. So why would I put a uniform on, go across and fight some other people okay. when you're treating us yes. this way? Yes. So they stripped him of his title, his money, everything. But he didn't care because he's a man of principle. Wow. That's why we call him the greatest. Let your That's why we come a great. I'm coming. You see, 
Uh, sometimes doing interview like this, you, you feel so sad and you, you ask yourself, then what are you doing now for the next generation to become and remember you like how we are remembered these people today? So ask uh, and that you, you, you will not understand what <laughs> I'm seeing here. And sometimes I, I, I can't think far. So this Mr. Jerry have put this thing together. You can also come in to, to help. It has a very big land here. So that you can... library and this thing over oh, here. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Mm. When we go to the end, we will show that uh, he's building a library so that all these things can be put in there so that when you come in, you will take some and read. You have to know yourself where you are coming from before you go and do something else. So let me end it here and continue the next time because it's a time that we used to work. I'm coming right now.